Love's Labor's Lost by William Shakespeare. Act 1, Scene 1. Enter Ferdinand, King of Navarre, Biron, Longueville, and Dumaine. Let fame that all hunt after in their lives live registered upon our brazen tombs, and then grace us in the disgrace of death, when, spite of cormorant devouring time, the endeavour of this present breath may buy that honour which shall bait his scythe's keen edge, and make us heirs of all eternity. Therefore, brave conquerors, for so you are, that war against your own affections and the huge army of the world's desires, our late edict shall strongly stand in force. Navarre shall be the wonder of the world. Our court shall be a little academe, still and contemplative in living art. You three, Biron, Dumaine, and Longueville, have sworn for three years' term to live with me, my fellow scholars, and to keep those statutes that are recorded in this schedule here. Your oaths are passed, and now subscribe your names, that his own hand may strike his honour down that violates the smallest branch herein. If you are armed to do as sworn to do, subscribe to your deep oaths, and keep it too. I am resolved. Tis but a three years fast. The mind shall banquet, though the body pine. Fat paunches have lean pates, and dainty bits make rich the ribs, but bankrupt quite the wits. My loving lord, domain is mortified. The grosser manner of these world's delights, he throws upon the gross world's baser slaves. To love, to wealth, to pomp, I pine and die, with all this living in philosophy. I can but say their protestation over. So much, dear liege, I have already sworn, that is, to live and study here three years. But there are other strict observances, as not to see a woman in that term, which I hope well is not enrolled there, and one day in a week to touch no food, and but one meal on every day beside, the which I hope is not enrolled there, and then to sleep but three hours in the night, and not be seen to wink of all the day? When I was wont to think no harm all night, and make a dark night too of half the day, which I hope well is not enrolled there. Oh, these are barren tasks, too hard to keep, not to see ladies, study, fast, not sleep. Your oath is passed to pass away from these. Let me say no, my liege, and if you please, I only swore to study with your grace and stay here in your court for three years' space. You swore to that, Biron, and to the rest. By yea and nay, sir, then I swore in jest. What is the end of study? Hmm? Let me know. Why, that to know which else we should not know. Things hid and barred, you mean, from common sense? Ay, that is study's godlike recompense. Oh, come on, then, I will swear to study so. To know the thing I am forbid to know? As thus, uh, to study where I well may dine, when I to feast expressly am forbid, or study where to meet some mistress fine, when mistresses from common sense are hid, or uh, having sworn too hard a keeping oath, uh, study to break it and not break my troth. If study's gain be thus, and this be so, study knows that which yet it doth not know. <laughs> Swear me to this, and I will ne'er say no. These be the stops that hinder study quite, and train our intellects to vain delight. Why, all delights are in vain, but that most vain which with pain purchased doth inherit pain. As painfully to pore upon a book, to seek the light of truth, while truth the while doth falsely blind the eyesight of his look. Light seeking light doth light of light beguile, so ere you find where light in darkness lies, your light grows dark by losing of your eyes. Study me how to please the eye indeed by fixing it upon a fairer eye, who dazzling so, that eye shall be his heed and give him light that it was blinded by. Study is like the heaven's glorious sun, 
that will not be deep searched with saucy looks small have continual plodders ever won save base authority from others books these earthly godfathers of heaven's lights that give a name to every fixed star have no more profit of their shining nights than those that walk and wot not what they are too much to know is to know naught but fame and every godfather can give a name how well he's read to reason against reading proceeded well to stop all good proceeding he weeds the corn and still lets grow the weeding the spring is near when green geese are a-breeding how follows that fit in his place and time in reason nothing something then in rhyme Beron is like an envious sneeping frost that bites the first-born infants of the spring well say i am why should proud summer boast before the birds have any cause to sing why should i joy in any abortive birth at christmas i no more desire a rose than wish a snow in may's new-fangled mirth but like of each thing that in season grows so you to study now it is too late climb o'er the house to unlock the little gate well sit you out go home Beron. adieu no my good lord i have sworn to stay with you and though i have for barbarism spoke more than for that angel knowledge you can say yet confident i'll keep what i have swore and bide the penance of each three years day give me the paper let me read the same and to the strictest degrees i'll write my name how well this yielding rescues thee from shame reads item that no woman shall come within a mile of my court hath this been proclaimed four days ago let's see the penalty reads on pain of losing her tongue who devised this penalty mary that did i sweet lord and why to fright them hence with that dread penalty a dangerous law against gentility reads item if any man be seen to talk with a woman within the term of three years he shall endure such public shame as the rest of the court can possibly devise this article my liege yourself must break for well you know here comes in embassy the french king's daughter with yourself to speak a maid of grace and complete majesty about surrender up of aquitaine to her decrepit sick and bedrid father therefore this article is made in vain or vainly comes the admired princess hither what say you lords why this was quite forgot so study evermore is overshot while it doth study to have what it would it doth forget to do the thing it should and when it hath the thing it hunteth most tis one as towns with fire so one so lost we must of force dispense with this decree she must lie here on mere necessity necessity will make us all forsworn three thousand times within this three years space for every man with his effects is born not by might mastered but by special grace if i break faith this word shall speak for me i am forsworn on mere necessity so to the laws at large i write my name subscribes and he that breaks them in the least degree stands in attainder of eternal shame suggestions are to other as to me but i believe although i seem so loath i am the last that will last keep his oath but is there no quick recreation granted ay that there is our court you know is haunted with the refined traveller of spain a man in all the world's new fashion planted that hath a mint of phrases in his brain one whom the music of his own vain tongue doth ravish like enchanting harmony a man of compliments whom right and wrong have chose as umpire of their mutiny this child of fancy that armado hight for interim to our studies shall relate in high-born words the worth of many a knight from tawny spain lost in the world's debate how you delight my lords i know not i but i protest i love to hear him lie and i will use him for my minstrelsy armado is a most illustrious wight a man of fire new words fashion's own knight custard the swain and he shall be our sport and so to study three years is but short 
Enter Dull with a letter, and Costard. Which is the Duke's own person? This fellow. What wouldst? I myself reprehend his own person, for I am his grace's Sarborough. But I would see his own person in flesh and blood. This is he. Signor Arm... Arm commends you. There's villainy abroad. This letter will tell you more. Sir, the contents thereof are as touching me. A letter from the magnificent Armado. How low soever the matter, I hope in God for high words. A high hope for a low heaven. God grant us patience. <laughs> to hear or forbear laughing? To hear meekly, sir, and to laugh moderately, or to forbear both. Well, sir, be it as the style shall give us cause to climb in the merriness. The matter is to me, sir, as concerning Giaconetta. The manner of it is, I was taken with the manner. In what manner? In manner and form following, sir, all those three. I was seen with her in the manor house, sitting with her upon the form, and taken following her into the park, which put together is in manner and form following. And now, sir, for the manner, it is the manner of a man to speak to a woman uh, for the form in some form. For the following, sir? As it shall follow in my correction, and God defend the right. Will you hear this letter with attention? As we would hear an oracle. Such is the simplicity of man to hearken after the flesh. Reads. Great deputy, the Welkins, vice-regent, and sole dominator of Navarre, my soul's earth's god, and body's fostering patron. Not a word of costard yet. So it is. It may be so. But if he say it is so, he is, in telling true, but so. Peace. Be to me and every man that dares not fight. No words. Of other men's secrets, I beseech you. Reads. So it is, besieged with sable-colored melancholy, I did commend the black oppressing humor to the most wholesome physic of thy health-giving air. And as I am a gentleman, betook myself to walk, the time when, about the sixth hour, when beasts most graze, birds best peck, and men sit down to that nourishment which is called supper. So much for the time when. Now for the ground which, which, I mean, I walked upon. It is eclept thy park. Then for the place where, where, I mean, I did encounter that obscene and preposterous event that draweth from my snow-white pen the ebon-colored ink which here thou viewest, beholdest, surveyest, or seest. But to the place where, it standeth north north east and by east from the west corner of thy curious knotted garden. There did I see that low-spirited swain, that base minnow of thy mirth. Me? That unlettered small-knowing soul. Me? That shallow vassal. Still me? Which, as I remember, height costard. Oh, me! Sorted and consorted, contrary to thy established proclaimed edict and continent canon, which with, oh, with, but with this I passion to say wherewith. With a wench. With a child of our grandmother Eve, a female, or, for thy more sweet understanding, a woman. Him I, as my ever-esteemed duty pricks me on, have sent to thee to receive the meed of punishment by thy sweet grace's officer, Anthony Dull, a man of good repute, carriage, bearing, and estimation. Me, ain't shall please you, I am Anthony Dull. For Jaquanetta, so is the weaker vessel called, which I apprehended with the aforesaid swain, I keep her as a vessel of the law's fury, and shall, at the least of thy sweet notice, bring her to trial. Thine in all compliments of devoted and heart-burning heat of duty, Don Adriano de Armado. This is not so well as I looked for, but the best that ever I heard. Ay, the best for the worst. But, sir, what say you to this? Uh, sir, I confess the wench. Did you hear the proclamation? I do confess much of the hearing it, but little of the marking of it. It was proclaimed a year's imprisonment to be taken with a wench. I was taken with none, sir. I was taken with a damsel. Well, it was proclaimed damsel. 
But, but this was no damsel neither, sir. She was a virgin. It is so varied, too, for it was proclaimed virgin. If it were, I deny her virginity. I was taken with a maid. This maid will not serve your turn, sir. This maid will serve my turn, sir. Sir, I will pronounce your sentence. You shall fast a week with bran and water. Uh, I had rather pray a month with mutton and porridge. And Don Armado shall be your keeper. My lord Biron, see him delivered o'er. And go we, lords, to put in practice that which each to other hath so strongly sworn. Exeunt Ferdinand, Longueville, and Dumaine. I'll lay my head to any good man's hat. These oaths and laws will prove an idle scorn. Sirrah, come on. I suffer for the truth, sir, for true it is. I was taken with Giaconetta, and Giaconetta is a true girl, and therefore welcome the sour cup of prosperity. Affliction may one day smile again. Until then, sit thee down, sorrow. Exeunt. Scene two. Enter Don Adriano di Armado and Moth. Boy, what sign is it when a man of great spirit grows melancholy? A great sign, sir, that he will look sad. Why, sadness is the one and self same thing, dear imp. No, no, O oh, Lord, sir, no. How canst thou part sadness and melancholy, my tender juvenile? By a familiar demonstration of the working, my tough senior. Why, tough senior? Why, tough senior? Why, tender juvenile? Why, tender juvenile? I spoke it, tender juvenile, as a congruent epitheton appertaining to thy young days, which we may nominate tender. And I, tough senior, as an appurtenant title to your old time, which we may name tough. Pretty and apt. How mean you, sir? I pretty and my saying apt, or I apt and my saying pretty? Thou pretty because little. Little pretty because little. Wherefore apt? And therefore apt because quick. Speak you this in my praise, master? In thy condign praise. I will praise an eel with the same praise. What, that an eel is ingenious? That an eel is quick. I do say thou art quick at answers. Thou heatest my blood. I am answered, sir. I love not to be crossed. Aside. He speaks the mere contrary. Crosses love not him. I have promised to study three years with the duke. You may do it in an hour, sir. Impossible. How many is one thrice told? I am ill at reckoning. It fitteth the spirit of a tapster. You are a gentleman and a gamester, sir. I confess both. They are both the varnish of a complete man. Then I am sure you know how much the gross sum of due sace amounts to. It doth amount to one more than two. Which the base vulgar do call three. True. Why, sir, is this such a piece of study? Now here is three studied, ere you'll thrice wink. And how easy it is to put years to the word three, and study three years in two words, the dancing horse will tell you. A most fine figure. To prove you a cipher. I will hereupon confess I am in love. And as it is base for a soldier to love, so am I in love with a base wench. If drawing my sword against the humour of affection would deliver me from the reprobate thought of it, I would take desire prisoner, and ransom him to any French courtier for a new devised courtesy. I think scorn to sigh, methinks I should outswear Cupid. Comfort me, boy. What great men have been in love? Hercules, master. Most sweet Hercules. More authority, dear boy, name more. And, sweet my child, let them be men of good repute and carriage. Samson, master. He was a man of good carriage, great carriage, for he carried the town gates on his back like a porter, and he was in love. O oh, well-knit Samson! Strong-jointed Samson, I do excel thee in my rapier as much as thou didst me in carrying gates. I am in love, too. Who was Samson's love, my dear moth? A woman, master. Of what complexion? Of all the four, or the three, or the two, or one of the four. Tell me precisely of what complexion? Of the seawater green, sir. Is that one of the four complexions? As I have read, sir, and the best of them, too. Green, indeed, is the colour of lovers, but to have a love of that colour, methinks Samson had small reason for it. He surely affected her for her wit. It was so, sir, for she had a green wit. My love is most immaculate, white and red. 
Most maculate thoughts, master, are masked under such colours. Define, define, well-educated infant. My father's wit and my mother's tongue assist me. Sweet invocation of a child, most pretty and pathetical. If she be made of white and red, her faults will ne'er be known, for blushing cheeks by faults are bred, and fears by pale white shown. Then if she fear or be to blame, by this you shall not know, for still her cheeks possess the same which native she doth owe. A dangerous rhyme-master against the reason of white and red. Is there not a ballad, boy, of the king and the beggar? The world was very guilty of such a ballad some three ages since, but I think now tis not to be found, or if it were, it would neither serve for the writing nor the tune. I will have that subject newly writ o'er, that I may example my digression by some mighty precedent. Boy, I do love that country girl that I took in the park with the rational hind custard. She deserves well. Aside. To be whipped. And yet a better love than my master. Sing, boy. My spirit grows heavy in love. And that's great marvel, loving a light wench. I say sing. Forbear till this company be past. Enter Dull, Costard, and Jaquanetta. Sir, the Duke's pleasure is that you keep Costard safe and you must suffer him to take no delight nor no penance. But I must fast three days a week. For this damsel, I must keep her at the park. She is allowed for the day-woman. Fare you well. I do betray myself with blushing. Maid! Man? I will visit thee at the lodge. That's hereby. I know where it is situate. Lord, how wise you are. I will tell thee wonders. With that face? I love thee. So I heard you say. And so farewell. Fair weather after you. Come, Jaquanetta, away. Exeunt Dull and Jaquanetta. Villain, thou shalt fast for thy offences ere thou be pardoned. Well, sir, I hope when I do it, I shall do it on a full stomach. Thou shalt be heavily punished. I am more bound to you than your fellows, for they are but lightly rewarded. Take away this villain. Shut him up. Come, you transgressing slave, away. Let me not be pent up, sir. I will fast being loose. No, sir, that were fast and loose. Thou shalt to prison. Well, if ever I do see the merry days of desolation that I have seen, some shall see. What shall some see? Nay, nothing, Master Moth, but what they look upon. It is not for prisoners to be too silent in their words, and therefore I will say nothing. I thank God I have as little patience as another man, and therefore I can be quiet. Exeunt Moth and Costard. I do affect the very ground which is base, where her shoe which is baser, guided by her foot which is basest, doth tread. I shall be forsworn, which is a great argument of falsehood, if I love. And how can that be true love which is falsely attempted? Love is a familiar, love is a devil, there is no evil angel but love. Yet was Samson so tempted, and he had an excellent strength, yet was Solomon so seduced, and he had a very good wit. Cupid's butt-shaft is too hard for Hercules' club, and therefore too much odds for a Spaniard's rapier. The first and second cause will not serve my turn. The passado he respects not, the duello he regards not. His disgrace is to be called boy, but his glory is to subdue men. Adieu, valor! Rust, rapier, be still, drum! For your manager is in love, yea, he loveth. Assist me, some extemporal god of rhyme, for I am sure I shall turn sonnet. Devise wit, write pen, for I am for whole volumes in folio. Exit. End of Act One. Act Two, Scene One. Enter the Princess of France, Rosaline, Moriah, Catherine, Boyette, Lords, and other attendants. Now, madam, summon up your dearest spirits. Consider who the king your father sends, to whom he sends, and what's his embassy. Yourself, held precious in the world's esteem, to parley with the sole inheritor of all perfections that a man may owe, matchless Navarre the plea of no less weight than aquitaine a dowry for a queen be now as prodigal of all dear grace as nature was in making graces dear when she did starve the general world beside 
and prodigally gave them all to you good lord boyette my beauty though but mean needs not the painted flourish of your praise beauty is bought by judgment of the eye not uttered by base sale of chapmen's tongues i am less proud to hear you tell my worth than you much willing to be counted wise in spending your wit in the praise of mine but now to task the tasker good boyette you are not ignorant all telling fame doth noise abroad navarre hath made a vow till painful study shall outwear three years no woman may approach his silent court therefore to seemeth it a needful course before we enter his forbidden gates to know his pleasure and in that behalf bold of your worthiness we single you as our best moving fair solicitor tell him the daughter of the king of france on serious business craving quick dispatch importance personal conference with his grace haste signify so much while we attend like humble visaged suitors his high will proud of employment willingly i go all pride is willing pride and yours is so exit boyette who are the votaries my loving lords that are vow fellows with this virtuous duke lord longerville is one know you the man i know him madam at a marriage feast between lord perigord and the beauteous heir of jacques falconbridge solemnized in normandy so i this longueville a man of sovereign parts he is esteemed well fitted in arts glorious in arms nothing becomes him ill that he would well the only soil of his fair virtue's gloss if virtue's gloss will stain with any soil is a sharp wit matched with too blunt a will whose edge hath power to cut whose will still wills it should none spare that come within his power some merry mocking lord belike is't so they say so most that most his humours know <laughs> such short-lived wits do wither as they grow who are the rest the young domain a well-accomplished youth of all that virtue love for virtue loved most power to do most harm least knowing ill for he hath wit to make an ill shape good, and shape to win grace though he had no wit. I saw him at the Duke Alençon's once, and much too little of that good I saw is my report to his great worthiness. Another of these students at that time was there with him, if I have heard a truth. Barone they call him, but a merrier man within the limit of becoming mirth I never spent an hour's talk withal. His eye begets occasion for his wit, for every object that the one doth catch, the other turns to a mirth-moving jest, which his fair tongue, conceits expositor, delivers in such apt and gracious words that aged ears play truant at his tales, and younger hearings are quite ravished, so sweet and voluble is his discourse. God bless my ladies! Are they all in love, that every one her own hath garnished with such bedecking ornaments of praise? Here comes Boyet. Re-enter Boyet. Now, what admittance, Lord? Navarre had notice of your fair approach, and he and his competitors in oath were all addressed to meet you, gentle lady, before I came. Mary, thus much I have learnt. He rather means to lodge you in the field, like one that comes here to besiege his court, than seek a dispensation for his oath to let you enter his unpeopled house. Here comes Navarre. Enter Ferdinand, Longueville, Dumaine, Biron, and attendants. Fair princess, welcome to the court of Navarre. Fair I give you back again, and welcome I have not yet. The roof of this court is too high to be yours, and welcome to the wide fields too base to be mine. You shall be welcome, madam, to my court. I will be welcome, then. Conduct me thither. Hear me, dear lady, I have sworn an oath. Our lady, help my lord, he'll be forsworn. Not for the world, fair madam, by my will. Why will shall break it, will and nothing else. Your ladyship is ignorant what it is. Were my lord so, his ignorance were wise, where now his knowledge must prove ignorance. I hear your grace hath sworn out housekeeping. Tis deadly sin to keep that oath, my lord, and sin to break it. But pardon me, I am too sudden bold, to teach a teacher ill beseemeth me. Vouchsafe to read the purpose of my coming, and suddenly resolve me in my suit. Madam, I will, if suddenly I may. 
You will the sooner that I were away, for you'll prove perjured if you make me stay. Did not I dance with you in Brabant once? Did not I dance with you in Brabant once? I know you did. How needless was it then to ask the question? You must not be so quick. Tis long of you that spur me with such questions. Your wit's too hot, it speeds too fast, twill tire. Not till it leave the rider in the mire. What time o' day? The hour that fools should ask. Now fair befall your mask. Fair fall the face it covers. And send you many lovers. Amen, so you be none. Nay, then I will be gone. Madam, your father here doth intimate the payment of a hundred thousand crowns, being but the one half of an entire sum dispersed by my father in his wars. But say that he or we, as neither have, received that sum, yet there remains unpaid a hundred thousand more, in surety of the which one part of Aquitaine is bound to us, although not valued to the money's worth. If, then, the king your father will restore but that one half which is unsatisfied, we will give up our right in Aquitaine, and hold fair friendship with his majesty. But that, it seems, he little purposeth, for here he doth demand to have repaid a hundred thousand crowns, and not demands, on payment of a hundred thousand crowns, to have his title live in Aquitaine, which we much rather had depart withal, and have the money by our father lent, than Aquitaine so gelded as it is. Dear princess, were not his request so far from reasons yielding, your fair self should make a yielding gainst some reason in my breast, and go well satisfied to France again. You do the king my father too much wrong, and wrong the reputation of your name, in so unseeming to confess receipt, of that which hath so faithfully been paid. I do protest I never heard of it, and if you prove it, I'll repay it back, or yield up Aquitaine. We arrest your word. Boyette, you can produce acquittances for such a sum from special officers of Charles, his father. Satisfy me so. So please, your grace. The packet is not come where that and other specialties are bound. To-morrow you shall have a sight of them. It shall suffice me, at which interview all liberal reason I will yield unto. Meantime, receive such welcome at my hand, as honour without breach of honour may make tender of to thy true worthiness. You may not come, fair princess, in my gates, but here, without, you shall be so received as you shall deem yourself lodged in my heart, though so denied fair harbour in my house. Your own good thoughts excuse me, and farewell. To-morrow shall we visit you again. Sweet health and fair desires consort your grace. Thy own wish wish I thee in every place. Exit. Lady, I will commend you to mine own heart. Pray you, do my commendations. I would be glad to see it. I would you heard it groan. Is the fool sick? <sighs> sick at the heart. Alack, let it blood. Would that do it good? My physic, says I. Will you pricked with your eye? No point with my knife. Now, God save thy life. And yours from long living. I cannot stay thanksgiving. Retiring. Sir, I pray you. Eward, what lady is that same? The heir of Alençon, Catherine her name. A gallant lady. Monsi, very well. Exit. I beseech you a word. What is she in the white? A woman sometimes, and you saw her in the light. Perchance light in the light? I desire her name. She hath but one for herself. To desire that were a shame. Pray you, sir, whose daughter? Her mother's, I have heard. God's blessing on your beard. Good sir, be not offended. She is an heir of Falconbridge. Nay, my choler is ended. She is a most sweet lady. Not unlike, sir, that may be. Exit Longaville. What's her name in the cap? Rosaline, by good hap. Is she wedded or no? To her will, sir, or so. You are welcome, sir. Adieu. Farewell to me, sir, and welcome to you. Exit Biron. That last is Biron, the merry madcap lord. Not a word with him but a jest. And every jest but a word. It was well done of you to take him at his word. I was as willing to grapple as he was to board. Two hot sheeps, merry. And wherefore not ships? 
no sheep sweet lamb unless we feed on your lips you sheep and i pasture shall that finish the jest so you grant pasture for me offering to kiss her not so gentle beast my lips are no common though several they be belonging to whom to my fortunes and me good wits will be jangling but gentles agree this civil war of wits were much better used on navarre and his bookmen for here tis abused if my observation which very seldom lies by the heart's still rhetoric disclosed with eyes deceive me not now navarre is infected with what with that which we lovers entitle affected your reason why all his behaviours did make their retire to the court of his eye peeping thorough desire his heart like an agate with your print impressed proud with his form in his eye pride expressed his tongue all patient to speak and not see did stumble with haste in his eyesight to be all senses to that sense did make their repair to feel only looking on fairest affair methought all his senses were locked in his eye as jewels in crystal for some prince to buy who tendering their own worth from where they were glassed did point you to buy them along as you passed his face's own margent did quote such amazes that all eyes saw his eyes enchanted with gazes i'll give you aquitaine and all that is his and you give him for my sake but one loving kiss come to our pavilion boyette is disposed but to speak that in words which his eye hath disclosed i only have made a mouth of his eye by adding a tongue which i know will not lie thou art an old love-monger and speakest skilfully he's cupid's grandfather and learns news of him then was venus like her mother for her father is but grim do you hear my mad wenches no what then do you see i our way to be gone you are too hard for me exeunt end of act two act three scene one enter don adriano di armado and ma warble child make passionate my sense of hearing Concolinel singing sweet air go tenderness of years take this key give enlargement to the swain bring him festinately hither i must employ him in a letter to my love master will you win your love with a french brawl how meanest thou brawling in french no my complete master but to jig off a tune at the tongue's end canary to it with your feet humour it with turning up your eyelids sigh a note and sing a note sometime through the throat as if you swallowed love with singing love sometime through the nose as if you snuffed up love by smelling love with your hat penthouse-like o'er the shop of your eyes with your arms crossed on your thin belly doublet like a rabbit on a spit or your hands in your pocket, like a man after the old painting, and keep not too long in one tune, but a snip and away. These are compliments, these are humours, these betray nice wenches that would be betrayed without these, and make them men of note. Do you note me, that are most affected to these? How hast thou purchased this experience? By my penny of observation. But, oh, but, oh! The hobby horse is forgot. Callest thou my love hobby-horse? No, master. The hobby-horse is but a colt, and your love perhaps a hackney. But have you forgot your love? Almost I had. Negligent student, learn her by heart. By heart and in heart, boy. And out of heart, master. All those three I will prove. What wilt thou prove? A man, if I live, and this by, in, and without, upon the instant. By heart you love her because your heart cannot come by her. In heart you love her, because your heart is in love with her. And out of heart you love her, being out of heart that you cannot enjoy her. I am all these three. And three times as much more, and yet nothing at all. Fetch hither the swain. He must carry me a letter. A message well sympathised, a horse to be ambassador for an ass. Ha! Ha! What sayest thou? Marry, sir, you must send the ass upon the horse, for he is very slow-gaited, but I go. The way is but short. Away. As swift as lead, sir. The meaning, pretty ingenious. Is not lead a metal heavy, dull, and slow? Many may, honest master. Or rather, master, no. I say lead is slow. You are too swift, sir, to say so. 
Is that lead slow which is fired from a gun? Sweet smoke of rhetoric. He reputes me a cannon, and the bullet, that's he. I shoot thee at the swain. Thump then, and I flee. Exit. A most acute juvenile, voluble and free of grace. By thy favour, sweet welkin, I must sigh in thy face. Most rude melancholy, valour gives thee place. My herald is returned. Re-enter Moth with Custard. A wonder, master. He is a custard broken in a shin. Some enigma, some riddle. Come, thy l'envoi, begin. No enigma, no riddle, no l'envoi. No salve in the mail, sir. O sa planta, a plain planta. No l'envoi. No l'envoi, no salve, sir, but a planta. By virtue thou enforcest laughter, thy silly thought my spleen, the heaving of my lungs provokes me to ridiculous smiling. O oh, pardon me, my stars! Doth the inconsiderate take salve for l'envoi, and the word l'envoi for a salve? Do the wise think them other? Is not l'envoi a salve? No, page, it is an epilogue or discourse to make plain some obscure precedence that hath to fore been sane. I will example it. The fox, the ape, and the humble bee were still at odds, being but three. There's the moral. Now the l'envoi. I will add the l'envoi. Say the moral again. The fox, the ape, and the humble bee were still at odds, being but three. Until the goose came out of door and stayed the odds by adding four. Now will I begin your moral, and do you follow with my l'envoi. The fox, the ape, and the humble bee were still at odds, being but three. Until the goose came out of door, staying the odds by adding four. A good l'envoi, ending in the goose. Would you desire more? The boy hath sold him a bargain, a goose that splat. Sir, your pennyworth is good, and your goose be fat. To sell a bargain well is as cunning as fast and loose. Let me see. A fat l'envoi. Ay, that's a fat goose. Come hither, come hither. How did this argument begin? By saying that a custard was broken in a shin. Then called you for the l'envoi. True, and I for a plantain. Thus came your argument in. Then the boy's fat l'envoi, the goose that you bought, and he ended the market. But tell me, how was there a custard broken in a shin? I will tell you sensibly. Thou hast no feeling of it, Moth. I will speak that l'envoi. I, Costard, running out that was safely within, fell over the threshold and broke my shin. We will talk no more of this matter. Till there be more matter in the shin. <laughs> Sir Costard, I will enfranchise thee. Oh, marry me to one Francis. I smell some l'envoi, some goose in this. By my sweet soul, I mean setting thee at liberty, and freedoming thy person. Thou wert immured, restrained, captivated, bound. True. True, and now you will be my purgation and let me loose. I give thee thy liberty, set thee from durance, and in lieu thereof impose on thee nothing but this. Bear this significant to the country made Jaconetta. Giving a letter. There is remuneration, for the best ward of mine honour is rewarding my dependence. Moth, follow. Exit. Like the sequel, I. Signor Custard, adieu. My sweet ounce of man's flesh, my iconic Jew. <laughs> Exit Moth. Now I will look to this remuneration. Remuneration. Oh, that's the Latin word for three farthings. Three farthings, remuneration. What's the price of the single? One penny. No, I'll give you a remuneration. Why, it carries it. Remuneration. Why, it is a fairer name than French crown. I will never buy and sell out of this word. Enter Biron. Oh, my good knave Costard, exceedingly well met. Pray you, sir, how much carnation ribbon may a man buy for a remuneration? What is a remuneration? Mary, sir, half penny farthing. Why then, three farthing worth of silk? I thank your worship. God be with you. Stay, slave, I must employ thee. As thou wilt win my favour, good my knave, do one thing for me that I shall entreat. When would you have it done, sir? This afternoon. Well, I will do it, sir. Fare you well. But th thou knowest not what it is. I shall know, sir, when I have done it. Why, villain, thou must know first. I will come to your worship tomorrow morning. It must be done this afternoon. Hark, slave, it is but this. The princess comes to hunt here in the park. 
and in her train there is a gentle lady when tongues speak sweetly then they name her name and rosaline they call her ask for her and to her white hand see thou do command this sealed up counsel there's thy guerdon go giving him a shilling gardon oh sweet gardon better than remuneration eleven pence farthing better <laughs> most sweet gardon i will do it sir in print gardon remuneration exit and i forsooth in love i that have been love's whip a, a very beadle to a humorous sigh a critic nay a night-watch constable a domineering pentor the boy than whom no mortal so magnificent this wimpled whining purblind wayward boy this senior junior giant dwarf dan cupid regent of love rhymes lord of folded arms the anointed sovereign of sighs and groans liege of all loiterers and malcontents dread prince of plackets king of codpieces sole imperator and great general of trotting parators oh my little heart and i to be a corporal of his field and wear his colours like a tumbler's hoop what i i love i sue i seek a wife a woman that is like a german clock still a repairing ever out of frame and never going aright being a watch but being watched that it may still go right nay to be perjured which is worst of all and among three to love the worst of all a whitely wanton with a velvet brow with two pitch-balls stuck in her face for eyes ay and by heaven one that will do the deed though argus were her eunuch and her guard and i to sigh for her to watch for her to pray for her ah oh, go to it is a plague that cupid will impose for my neglect of his almighty dreadful little might well i will love write sigh pray sue and groan some men must love my lady and some joan Exit. End of Act Three. Act Four, Scene One. Enter the Princess and her train, a forester, Boyette, Rosaline, Moriah, and Catherine. Was that the king that spurred his horse so hard against the steep uprising of the hill? I know not, but I think it was not he. Whoera was, assured a mounting mind. Well, lords, today we shall have our dispatch. On Saturday we will return to France. Then, Forrester, my friend, where is the bush that we must stand and play the murderer in? Hereby, upon the edge of yonder coppice, a stand where you may make the fairest shoot. I thank my beauty, I am fair that shoot, and thereupon thou speak'st the fairest shoot. Pardon me, madam, for I meant not so. What? What? First praise me, and again say no. O oh, short-lived pride! Not fair! Alack for woe! yes madam fair nay never paint me now where fair is not praise cannot mend the brow here good my glass take this for telling true fair payment for foul words is more than due nothing but fair is that which you inherit oh see see my beauty will be saved by merit o oh, heresy and fair fit for these days a giving hand though foul shall have fair praise but come the bow now mercy goes to kill and shooting well is then accounted ill thus will i save my credit in the shoot not wounding pity would not let me do it if wounding then it was to show my skill that more for praise than purpose meant to kill and out of question so it is sometimes glory grows guilty of detested crimes when for fame's sake for praise an outward part we bend to that the working of the heart as i for praise alone now seek to spill the poor dear's blood that my heart means no ill do not cursed wives hold that self-sovereignty only for praise's sake when they strive to be lords or their lords only for praise 
and praise we may afford to any lady that subdues a lord. Here comes a member of the Commonwealth. Enter Custard. God dig you then all. Pray you, which is the head lady? Thou shalt know her fellow by the rest that have no heads. Which is the greatest lady? The highest? The thickest and the tallest. The thickest and the tallest? It is so, truth is truth. And your waist, mistress, were as slender as my wit, or one of these maids' girdles for your waist should be fit. Are not you the chief woman? You are the thickest here. What's your will, sir? What's your will? I have a letter from Monsieur Biron to one Lady Rosalind. Oh, thy letter, thy letter! He's a good friend of mine. Stand aside, good bear. Boyette, you can carve. Break up this capon. I am bound to serve. This letter is mistook. It importeth none here. It is writ to Jacquinetta. We will read it, I swear. Break the neck of the wax, and every one give ear. Reads. By heaven that thou art fair is most infallible. True that thou art beauteous, truth itself that thou art lovely. More fairer than fair, beautiful than beauteous, truer than truth itself have commiseration on thy heroical vassal. The magnanimous and most illustrate King Cophetua set eye upon the pernicious and indubitate beggar Xenephalon, and he it was that might rightly say, Veni vidi vici, which to anathanize in the vulgar, O oh, base and obscure vulgar, videlicet, he came, saw, and overcame, he came, one, saw, two, overcame, three. Who came? The king. Why did he come? To see. Why did he see? To overcome. To whom came he? To the beggar. What saw he? The beggar. Who overcame he? The beggar. The conclusion is victory. On whose side? The king's. The captive is enriched. On whose side? The beggar's. The catastrophe is a nuptial. On whose side? The king's. No, on both in one, or one in both. I am the king, for so stands the comparison. Thou the beggar, for so witnesseth thy lowliness. Shall I command thy love? I may. Shall I enforce thy love? I could. Shall I entreat thy love? I will. What shalt thou exchange for rags? Robes. For tittles? Titles. For thyself? Me. Thus expecting thy reply, I profane my lips on thy foot, my eyes on thy picture, and my heart on thy every part. Thine in the dearest design of industry, Don Adriano de Armado. Thus dost thou hear the Nemean lion roar against thee, thou lamb, that standest as his prey. Submissive fall his princely feet before, and he from forage will incline to play. But if thou strive, poor soul, what art thou then? Food for his rage, repasture for his den. What plume of feathers is he that indicted this letter? What vein, what weathercock? Did you ever hear better? I am much deceived, but I remember the style. Else your memory is bad going o'er it erewhile. This armado is a Spaniard that keeps here in court a phantasm, a monarcho, and one that makes sport to the prince and his bookmates. Thou, fellow, a word. Who gave thee this letter? I told you, my lord. To whom shouldst thou give it? From my lord to my lady. From which lord to which lady? From my lord Biron, a good master of mine, to a lady of France that he called Rosaline. Thou hast mistaken his letter. Come, lords, away. To Rosaline. Here, sweet, put up this. Twill be thine another day. Exeunt princess in train. Who is the suitor? Who is the suitor? Shall I teach you to know? I, my continent of beauty. Why, she that bears the bow, finely put off. My lady goes to kill horns, but, if thou marry, hang me by the neck if horns that year miscarry, finely put on. Well, then, I am the shooter. And who is your dear? If we choose by the horns, yourself come not near. Finely put on indeed. You still wrangle with her, Boyette, and she strikes at the brow. But she herself is hit lower. Have I hit her now? Shall I come upon thee with an old saying that was a man when King Pepin of France was a little boy as touching the hit it? So I may answer thee with one as old that was a woman when Queen Guinevere of Britain was a little wench as touching the hit it. Thou canst not hit it, hit it, hit it. Thou canst not hit it, my good man. 
and I cannot, 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 and I cannot, another can. Exeunt Rosaline and Catherine. By my troth, most pleasant, how both did fit it. A mark marvellous well shot, for they both did hit it. A mark? Oh, mark but that mark. A mark, says my lady. Let the mark have a prick in't, to meet at, if it may be. Why doth the bow hand? I faith your hand is out. Indeed, I must shoot nearer, or he'll ne'er hit the clout. And if my hand be out, then be like your hand is in. Then will she get the upshoot by cleaving the pen. Come, come, you talk greasily, your lips grow foul. She's too hard for you at prick, sir. Challenge her to bow. I fear too much rubbing. Good night, my good owl. Exeunt Boyet and Moriah. By my soul, the swain, a most simple clown. Lord, Lord, how the ladies and I have put him down, O oh, Matroth. Most sweet jests, most iconic, vulgar wit. When it comes so smoothly off, so obscenely, as it were, so fit. A model on the one side, oh, a most dainty man. To see him walk before a lady and to bear her fan, to see him kiss his hand, and how most sweetly all swear. And his page on the other side, that handful of wit. Ha, heavens, it is a most pathetical nit. Sola, Sola. Shout within. Exit Costard, running. Scene two. Enter Holofernes, Sir Nathaniel, and Dull. Very reverend sport, truly, and done in the testimony of a good conscience. The deer was, as you know, Sanguis in blood, ripe as the palma water, who now hangeth like a jewel in the ear of Caelo, the sky, the welkin, the heaven, and anon falleth like a crab on the face of terra, the soil, the land, the earth. Truly, Master Holofernes, the epithets are sweetly varied, like a scholar at the least, but, sir, I assure ye, it was a buck of the first head. Sir Nathaniel, howd credo. T'was not a hard credo, t'was a pricket. Most barbarous intimation, yet a kind of... Um, insinuation as it were an envia <coughs> in way of explication facere as it were replication or rather ostentare to show as it were his inclination after his undressed unpolished un educated, unpruned, untrained, or rather unlettered, or rather rest, unconfirmed fashion, to insert again my how to credo for a deer. I said the deer was not a hard credo, t'was a pricket. Twice sod simplicity, his cotus, oh, the monster ignorance how deformed dost thou look sir he hath never fed of the dainties that are bred in a book he hath not eat paper as it were he hath not drunk ink his intellect is not replenished he is only an animal only sensible in the duller parts and such barren plants are set before us that we thankful should be, which we of taste and feeling are, for those parts that do fructify in us more than he. For as it would ill become me to be vain, indiscreet, or a fool, so were there a patch set on learning, to see him in a school, but omne bene se I, being of an old father's mind, many can brook the weather that love not the wind." You two are bookmen. Can you tell me by your wit what was a month old at Cain's birth that's not five weeks old as yet? 
Dictina, good man, dull. Dictina, good man, dull. What is Dictnia? A title to Phoebe, to Luna, to the moon. The moon was a month old when Adam was no more, and wrought not to five weeks when he came to five score. The illusion holds in the exchange. Tis true indeed, the collusion holds in the exchange. Cut comfort thy capacity. I say, the illusion holds in the exchange. And I say, the pollution holds in the exchange. For the moon is never but a month old, and I say beside that, twas a pricket that the princess killed. Sir Nathaniel, will you hear an extemporal epitaph on the death of the deer, and to humour the ignorant, call I the deer the princess killed a pricket? Perge, good master Holofernes, perge, so it shall please you to abrogate scurrility. I will something affect the letter, for it argues facility. <clears throat> the prayful princess pierced and pricked a pretty pleasing pricket. Some say a sore, but not a sore, till now made sore with shooting. The dogs did yell, put L to sore, then Sorel jumps from thicket, or pricket sore, or else Sorel, the people fall a hooting. If sore be sore, then L to sore makes fifty sores, one Sorel. Of one sore I an hundred make, by adding but one more L. Oh, a rare talent. Aside. If a talent be a claw, look how we claws him with a talent. This is a gift that I have, simple, simple, a foolish, extravagant spirit, full of forms, figures, shapes, objects, ideas, apprehensions, motions, revolutions, these are begot in the ventricle of memory, nourished in the womb of Pia Mater, and delivered upon the mellowing of occasion. But the gift is good in those in whom it is acute, and I am thankful for it. Sir, I praise the Lord for you, and so may my parishioners, for their sons are well tutored by you, and their daughters profit very greatly under you. You are a good member of the commonwealth. Mayor Clay, if their sons be ingenuous, they shall want no instruction. If their daughters be capable, I will put it to them. But vird sapit qui pauca locitur, a soul feminine saluteth us. Enter Jaquinetta and Custard. God give you good morrow, Master Parson. Master Parson, quasi person, and if one should be pierced, which is the one? Marry, Master Schoolmaster, he that is likest to a hog's head. Piercing a hog's head? <laughs> a good lustre of conceit in a tuft of earth. Fire enough for a flint, pearl enough for a swine. Tis pretty. It is well. Good Master Parson, be so good as read me this letter. It was given me by Costard, and sent me from Don Armada. I beseech you, read it. Faust, pre curgelida quando pecus, omne subumbra ruminat, and so forth. Ah, good old Mantuan, I may speak of thee as the traveller doth of Venice. Venetia, Venetia. Chi non ti vede, non ti preccia. Old Mantuan, old Mantuan, who understandeth thee not, loves thee not. Ut, re sola mi fa. <clears throat> Under pardon, sir, what are the contents? Or, rather, as Horace says in his, what, my soul, 
verses. Ay, sir, and very learned. Let me hear a staff, a stanze, a verse. Legge domine. Reads. If love make me forsworn, how shall I swear to love? Ah, never faith could hold, if not to beauty vowed. Though to myself forsworn, to thee I'll faithful prove. Those thoughts to me were oaks. To thee, like osiers bowed, study his bias leaves, and make his book thine eyes, where all those pleasures live that art would comprehend. If knowledge be the mark, to know thee shall suffice. Well learned is that tongue that well can thee commend all ignorant, that soul that sees thee without wonder. Which is to me some praise that I thy parts admire. Thy eye, Jove's lightning, bears thy voice his dreadful thunder, which not to anger bent is music and sweet fire. Celestial as thou art, O pardon, love, this wrong, that sings heaven's praise with such an earthly tongue. You find not the apostrophus, and so miss the accent. Let me supervise the casonet. Here are only numbers ratified, but for the elegancy, facility, and golden cadence of poesy, got it. Olvidius Nasso was the man, and why indeed Nasso, but for smelling out the odoriferous flowers of fancy, the jerks of invention. Imitare is nothing. So doth the hound his master, the ape his keeper, the tired horse his rider. But Damosella Virgin, was this directed to you? I, sir, from one Monsieur Baron, one of the strange queen's lords. I will overglance the superscript. To the snow-white hand of the most beauteous lady, Rosaline. I will look again on the intellect of the letter for the nomination of the party writing to the person written unto. Your ladyships in all desired employment. Biron. Sir Nathaniel, this Biron is one of the votaries with the king, and here he hath framed a letter to a sequent of the stranger queens, which accidentally, or by the way of progression, hath miscarried. Trip and go, my sweet, deliver this paper into the royal hand of the king. It may concern much. Um, stay not thy compliment. I forgive thy duty. Adieu. Good Custard, go with me. Sir, God save your life. Have with thee, my girl. Exeunt Custard and Jacquinetta. Sir, you have done this in the fear of God very religiously, and as a certain father saith... Sir, tell me not of the father. I do fear colourable colours. But <clears throat> to return to the verses, did they please you, sir Nathaniel? Marvellous well for the pen. I do dine to-day at the father's of a certain pupil of mine, where, if before repast, it shall please you to gratify the table with a grace, I will, on my privilege I have with the parents of the foresaid child or pupil, undertake your benvenuto, where I will prove those verses to be very unlearned, neither savouring of poetry, wit, nor invention. I beseech your society. And thank you, too, for society, saith the text, is the happiness of life. And, certes, the text most infallibly concludes it. To dull. Sir, I do invite you, too. You shall not say me nay. Pauca verba. Away, the gentles are at their game, and we will to our recreation. Exeunt. Scene three. Enter Biron with the paper. The king... He is hunting the deer. I am coursing myself. They have pitched a toil. I am toiling in a pitch. Pitch that defiles. 
defile a foul word well set thee down sorrow for so they say the fool said and so say i and i the fool oh, well proved wit by the lord this love is as mad as ajax it kills sheep it kills me i a sheep well proved again at my side i will not love if i do hang me if faith i will not oh but her eye uh, by this light but for her eye i would not love her yes <laughs> for her two eyes well i do nothing in the world but lie and lie in my throat by heaven i do love and it hath taught me to rhyme and to be melancholy and here is part of my rhyme and here my melancholy <laughs> well she hath one of my sonnets already the clown bore it the fool sent it and the lady hath it sweet clown sweeter fool sweetest lady by the world i would not care a pin if the other three were in here comes one with a paper god give him grace to groan stands aside enter ferdinand with the paper hi me aside ah oh, shot by heaven proceed sweet cupid thou hast thumped him with thy bird bolt under the left pap in faith secrets reads so sweet a kiss the golden sun gives not to those fresh morning drops upon the rose as thy eye-beams when their fresh rays have smote the night of dew that on my cheeks down flows nor shines the silver moon one half so bright through the transparent bosom of the deep as doth thy face through tears of mine give light thou shinest in every tear that i do weep no drop but as a coach doth carry thee so ridest thou triumphing in my woe do but behold the tears that swell in me and they thy glory through my grief will show but do not love thyself then thou wilt keep my tears for glasses and still make me weep o oh, queen of queens how far dost thou excel no thought can think nor tongue of mortal tell how shall she know my griefs i'll drop the paper sweet leaves shade folly who is he comes here steps aside what longaville and reading listen ear now in thy likeness one more fool appear enter longaville with the paper i me i am forsworn why he comes in like a perjurer wearing papers in love i hope sweet fellowship in shame one drunkard loves another of the name am i the first that have been perjured so i could put thee in comfort not by two that i know thou makest the triumvirate the corner cap of society the shape of love's tyburn that hangs up simplicity i fear these stubborn lines lack the power to move o sweet maria empress of my love these numbers i will tear and write in prose oh rhymes are guards on wanton cupid's hose disfigure not his slop the same shall go reads did not the heavenly rhetoric of thine eye against whom the world cannot hold argument persuade my heart to this false perjury vows for thee broke deserve not punishment a woman i forswore but i will prove thou being a goddess i forswore not thee my vow was earthly thou a heavenly love thy grace being gained cures all disgrace in me vows are but breath and breath a vapour is then thou fair son which on my earth dost shine exhalest this vapour vow in thee it is if broken then it is no fault of mine if by me broke what fool is not so wise to lose an oath to win a paradise this is the liver vein which makes flesh a deity a green goose a goddess pure pure idolatry oh, god amend us god amend we are much out of the way by whom shall i send this company stay steps aside all hid all hid an old infant play like a demigod here sit i in the sky 
and wretched fool's secrets heedfully o'er i more sacks to the mill oh heavens i have my wish enter dumaine with the paper dumaine transformed four woodcocks in a dish o oh, most divine catty o oh, most profane coxcomb by heaven the wonder in immortal life by earth she is not corporal there you lie her amber hair for foul hath amber coated an amber-coloured raven was well noted as upright as the cedar stoop i say her shoulder is with child as fair as day ay as some days but then no sun must shine o oh, that i had my wish and i had mine and i mine too good lord amen so i had mine is not that a good word i would forget her but a fever she reigns in my blood and will remember be a fever in your blood why then incision would let her out in saucers <laughs> sweet miss prision once more i'll read the odd that i have writ once more i'll mark how love can vary wit reads on a day elect a day love was month as ever may spider blossom passing fair playing in the wanton air through the velvet leaves the wind all unseen can passers find all the lover sick to death wish himself to have its bread air quoth he thy cheeks may blow air would i might triumph so but alack my hand is sworn neighbour to pluck thee from thy torn vow alack for youth unmeet youth so apt to pluck a sweet do not call it sin in me that i have forsworn for thee thou for whom jove would swear juno but an idiot beware and then i himself for jove turning mortal for thy love this will I send, and something else more plain, that shall express my true love's fasting pain. O oh, would the king be wrong and long of ill, where love is too? Ill, to example, ill, would from my forehead wipe a perjured note, for none often were all alike to dote. Advancing. Dumain, their love is far from charity. You may look pale, but I should blush, I know, to be our hard and taken napping so. Advancing. Come, sir, you blush, as his your case is such. You chide at him, offending twice as much. You do not love Maria. Longueville did never sonnet for her sake compile, nor never lay his wreathed arms athwart his loving bosom to keep down his heart. I have been closely shrouded in this bush, and marked you both, and for you both did blush i heard your guilty rhymes observed your fashion saw sighs reek from you noted well your passion ay me says one o oh, jove the other cries one her hairs were gold crystal the other's eyes to longueville you would for paradise break faith and troth to dumaine and jove for your love would infringe an oath what will Baron say when that he shall hear faith so infringed which such zeal did swear? How will he scorn? How will he spend his wit? How will he triumph, leap, and laugh at it? For all the wealth that ever I did see, I would not have him know so much by me. Now step I forth to whip hypocrisy. Advancing. Ah, good my liege, I pray you, pardon me. Good heart, what grace hast thou? thus to reprove these worms for loving that art most in love your eyes do make no coaches in your tears there is no certain princess that appears you'll not be perjured tis a hateful thing tush none but minstrels like of sonneting but are you not ashamed nay are you not all three of you to be thus much o'ershot you found his moat the king your moat did see but i a beam do find in each of three oh what a scene of foolery have i seen of sighs of groans of sorrow and of teen oh me with what strict patience have i sat to see a king transformed to a gnat to see great hercules whipping a gig and profound solomon to tune a jig and nestor play at pushpin with the boys and critic time and laugh at idle toys where lies thy grief o tommy good dumain and gentle longueville where lies thy pain and where my lieges all about the breast a caudle ho 
too bitter is thy jest are we betrayed thus to thy overview not you to me but i betrayed by you i that am honest i that hold it sin to break the vow i am engaged in i am betrayed by keeping company with men like men of inconstancy when should you see me write a thing in rhyme or groan for love or spend a minute's time in pruning me when shall you hear that i will praise a hand a foot a face an eye a gait a state a brow a breast a waist alike a limb soft whither away so fast a true man or a thief that gallops so i post from love good lover let me go enter jacquinetta and custard god bless the king what present hast thou there some certain treason what makes treason here nay it makes nothing sir if it mar nothing neither the treason and you go in peace away together i beseech your grace let this letter be read our parson misdoubts it twas treason he said biron read it over giving him the paper where hadst thou it of costard where hadst thou it of don adramario don adramario biron tears the letter how now what is in you why dost thou tear it a, a, a toy my liege a toy your, your grace needs not fear it it did move him to passion and therefore let's hear it it is biron's writing and here is his name gathering up the pieces to custard ah you horse and loggerhead you were born to do me shame oh guilty my lord guilty i confess i confess what that you three fools lacked me fool to make up the mess he he and you and you my liege and i are pick purses in love and we deserve to die oh dismiss this audience and i shall tell you more now the number is even true true we are four will these turtles be gone hence sirs away walk aside the true folk and let the traitors stay exeunt custard and jacquinetta sweet lord sweet lovers oh let us embrace as true we are as flesh and blood can be the sea will ebb and flow heaven show his face young blood doth not obey an old decree we cannot cross the cause why we were born therefore of all hands must we be forsworn what did these rent lines show some love of thine did they quoth you hm. who sees the heavenly rosaline that like a rude and savage man of ind at the first opening of the gorgeous east bows not his vassal head and struck in blind kisses the base ground with obedient breast what peremptory eagle-sighted eye dares look upon the heaven of her brow that is not blinded by her majesty what zeal what fury hath inspired thee now my love her mistress is a gracious moon she an attending star scarce seen a light my eyes are then no eyes nor i barone oh but for my love they would turn to night of all complexions the cold sovereignty do meet as at a fair in her fair cheek where several worthies make one dignity where nothing wants that want itself doth seek lend me the flourish of all gentle tongues fie painted rhetoric oh she needs it not to things of sale a seller's praise belongs she passes praise then praise too short doth blot a weathered hermit five score winters worn might shake off fifty looking in her eye beauty doth varnish age as if new-born and gives the crutch the cradle's infancy oh tis the sun that maketh all things shine by heaven thy love is black as ebony is ebony like her oh the wood divine a wife of such wood were felicity oh who can give an oath where is a book that i may swear beauty doth beauty lack if that she learn not of her eye to look no face is fair that is not full so black o oh, paradox black is the badge of hell the hue of dungeons and the suit of night and beauty's crest becomes the heavens well devils soonest tempt resembling spirits of light 
Oh, if in black my lady's brows be decked, it mourns that painting and usurping hair should ravish doters with a false aspect, and therefore is she born to make black fair. Her favour turns the fashion of the days, for native blood is counted painting now, and therefore red that would avoid dispraise paints itself black to imitate her brow. To look like her are as chimney sweepers black. And since her time are colliers counted bright. And Ethiops of their sweet complexion crack. Dark needs no candles now, for dark is light. Your mistresses dare never come in rain, for fear their colours should be washed away. Twere good yours did, for, sir, to tell you plain, I'll find a fairer face not washed to-day. I'll prove her fair or talk till doomsday here. No devil will fright thee then so much as she. I never knew man hold vile stuff so dear. Look, here's thy love, my foot and her face see. Oh, if the streets were paved with thine eyes, her feet were much too dainty for such tread. O oh, vile, then as she goes, what upward lies, the streets should see, as she walked over hay. But what of this? Are we not all in love? Nothing so sure, and thereby all forsworn. Then leave this chat, and good Biron, now prove our loving lawful, and our faith not torn. I marry there some flattery for this evil oh some authority how to proceed some tricks some quillets how to cheat the devil some sale for perjury tis more than you need have at you then affections men-at-arms consider what you first did swear unto to fast to study and to see no woman flat treason gainst the kingly state of youth say can you fast your stomachs are too young and abstinence engenders maladies and where that you have vowed to study lords in that each of you have forsworn his book can you still dream and pore and thereon look for when would you my lord or you or you have found the ground of study's excellence without the beauty of a woman's face from women's eyes this doctrine i derive they are the ground the books the academes from whence doth spring the true promethean fire why universal plodding poisons up the nimble spirits in the arteries as motion and long during action tires the sinewy vigour of the traveller now for not looking on a woman's face you have in that forsworn the use of eyes and study too the causer of your vow for is there any author in the world teaches such beauty as a woman's eye? Learning is but an adjunct to ourself, and where we are, our learning likewise is. Then when ourselves we see in ladies' eyes, do we not likewise see our learning there? Oh, we have made a vow to study, lords, and in that vow we have forsworn our books. For when would you, my liege, or you or you in leaden contemplation have found out such fiery numbers as the prompting eyes of beauty's tutors have enriched you with other slow arts entirely keep the brain and therefore finding barren practisers scarce show a harvest of their heavy toil but love first learned in a lady's eyes lives not alone immured in the brain but with the motion of all elements courses as swift as thought in every power and gives to every power a double power above their functions and their offices it adds a precious seeing to the eye a lover's eyes will gaze an eagle blind a lover's ear will hear the lowest sound when the suspicious head of theft is stopped love's feeling is more soft and sensible than are the tender horns of cockled snails love's tongue proves dainty bacchus gross in taste for valour is not love a hercules still climbing trees in the hesperides subtle as sphinx as sweet and musical as bright apollo's lute strung with his hair and when love speaks the voice of all the gods makes heaven drowsy with the harmony never durst poet touch a pen to write until his ink were tempered with love's sighs 
Oh, then his lines would ravish savage ears and plant in tyrants mild humility. From women's eyes this doctrine I derive. They sparkle still the right Promethean fire. They are the books, the arts, the academes that show, contain, and nourish all the world. Else not at all in aught proves excellent. Then fools you were these women to forswear, or, keeping what is sworn, you will prove fools. For wisdom's sake, a word that all men love, or for love's sake, a word that loves all men, or for men's sake, the authors of these women, or women's sake, by whom we men are men. Let us once lose our oaths to find ourselves, or else we lose ourselves to keep our oaths. It is religion to be thus forsworn, for charity itself fulfills the law, and who can sever love from charity? Saint Cupid, then, and soldiers to the field. Advance your standards and upon them, lords. Pell-mell, down with them. But be first advised, in conflict, that you get the son of them. Now to plain dealing. Lay these glosses by. Shall we resolve to woo these girls of France? And win them, too. Therefore let us devise some entertainment for them in their tents. First from the park let us conduct them thither. Then homeward every man attach the hand of his fair mistress. In the afternoon we will with some strange pastime solace them, such as the shortness of the time can shape. For revels, dances, masks, and merry hours forerun fair love, strewing her way with flowers. Away, away! No time shall be omitted that will be time, and may by us be fitted. Allons, allons! Sowed cockle reaped no corn, and justice always whirls in equal measure. Light wenches may prove plagues to men forsworn. If so, our copper buys no better treasure. Exeunt. End of Act 4 Act 5, Scene 1 Enter Holofernes, Sir Nathaniel, and Dull. Satis quod sufficit. I praise God for you, sir. Your reasons at dinner have been sharp and sententious, pleasant without scurrility, witty without affection, audacious without impudency, learned without opinion, and strange without heresy. I did converse this quondam day with the companion of the kings, who is intituled, nominated, or called Don Adriano de Armado. Novi hominem tanquam te. His humour is <coughs> lofty, his discourse peremptory, his tongue filed, his eye ambitious, his gait majestical, and his general behaviour vain, ridiculous, and trasonical. He is too picked, too spruce, too affected, too odd, as it were, too peregrinate, as I may call it. A most singular and choice epithet. Draws out his table book. He draweth out the thread of his verbosity, finer than the staple of his argument. I abhor such fanatical fantasemes, such insociable and point devise companions, such rakers of orthography, as to speak doubt fine, when he should say doubt, debt when he should pronounce dept, d e b t not D-E-T. He cleppeth a calf, calf, half, half. Nay, bower, neighbor. Nay, abbreviated, nay. This is abominable, which he would call abominable. It insinuateth me of insanie. Ane intelligis domine, to make frantic lunatic. Laus Deo bene intelligo. Bon, bon, for bon. Prisian, 
A little scratched, twill serve. Vides nequis venit? Videl, e gaudel. Enter Don Adriano di Armado, Ma, and Costard. Chira, quade chira, not sira. Men of peace, well encountered. Most military, sir, salutation. Aside to Costard. They have been at a great feast of languages and stolen the scraps. Oh, they have lived long on the arms basket of words. I marvel thy master hath not eaten thee for a word, for thou art not so long by the head as honor the cobble to Limpatsus. Thou art easier swallowed than a flat dragon. Peace, the peal begins. To Holofernes. Monsieur, are you not lettered? Yes, yes. He teaches boys the horn book. What is A B spelt backward with the horn on his head? Ba. Pueritia, with a horn added. Ba, most silly sheep with a horn. You hear his learning. Quis, quis, thou consonant. The third of the five vowels, if you repeat them, or the fifth, if I. I will repeat them. A, E, I. The sheep. The other concludes it. O, U. Now, by the salt wave of the Mediterranean, a sweet touch, a quick venue of wit. Snap, snap, quick and home, it rejoiceth my intellect, true wit. Offered by a child to an old man, which is wit old. What is the figure? What is the figure? Horns. Thou disputest like an infant. Go, whip thy gig. Lend me your horn to make one, and I will whip about your infamy circum circa, a gig of a cuckold's horn. And I had but one penny in the world, thou shouldst have it by gingerbread. There is the very remuneration I had of thy master, thou half-penny purse of wit, thou pigeon-egg of discretion. Oh, and the heavens were so pleased that thou wert but my bastard. What a joyful father wouldst thou make! Go to, thou hast it on dunghill, at the fingers' ends, as they say. Oh, I smell false Latin, dunghill for ungwen, or... Mons, the hill. At your sweet pleasure, for the mountain. I do. Sans question. Sir, it is the king's most sweet pleasure and affection to congratulate the princess at her pavilion in the posteriors of this day, which the rude multitude call the afternoon. The posterior of the day. Most generous, sir, is liable, congruent, and measurable for the afternoon. The word is well culled, chose, sweet, and apt. I do assure you, sir, I do assure. Sir, the king is a noble gentleman, and my familiar, I do assure ye, very good friend. For what is inward between us, let it pass. I do beseech thee, remember thy courtesy. I beseech thee, apparel thy head. And among other important and most serious designs, and of great import indeed, too, but let that pass. For I must tell thee, it will please his grace, by the world, some time to lean upon my poor shoulder, and with his royal finger thus dally with my excrement, with my mustachio. But, sweetheart, let that pass. By the world I recount no fable. Some certain special honours it pleaseth his greatness to impart to Armado, a soldier, a man of travel that hath seen the world. But let that pass. The very all of all is, but, sweetheart, I do implore secrecy, that the king would have me present the princess, sweet Chuck, with some delightful ostentation or show or pageant or antique or firework. Now, understanding that the curate and your sweet self are good at such eruptions and sudden breaking out of mirth, as it were, I have acquainted you with all, to the end, to crave your assistance. Sir, you shall present before her the nine worthies. Sir, as concerning some entertainment of time, some show in the posterior of this day, to be rendered by our assistance at the king's command and this most gallant illustrate and learned gentleman before the princess i say none so fit as to present the nine worthies where will you find men worthy enough to present them joshua yourself 
myself and this gallant gentleman judas machabeus this swain because of his great limb or joint shall pass pompey the great the page hercules pardon sir error he is not quantity enough for that worthy's thumb he is not so big as the end of his club shall i have audience he shall present hercules in minority his enter and exit shall be strangling a snake and i will have an apology for that purpose an excellent device so if any of the audience hiss you may cry well done hercules now thou crushest the snake that is the way to make an offence gracious though few have the grace to do it for the rest of the worthies i will play three myself thrice worthy gentlemen shall i tell you a thing we attend we will have if this fadge not an antique i beseech you follow via good man dull thou hast spoken no word all this while nor understood none neither sir allons we will employ thee i'll make one in a dance or so or i will play on the tabor to the worthies and let them dance the hay most dull honest dull to our sport away exeunt scene two enter the princess catherine rosaline and maria sweethearts we shall be rich ere we depart if fairings come thus plentifully in a lady walled about with diamonds look you what i have from the loving king madam came nothing else along with that nothing but this yes as much love in rhyme as would be crammed up in a sheet of paper writ o' both sides the leaf margent and all that he was fain to seal on cupid's name that was the way to make his godhead wax for he hath been five thousand years a boy ay and a shrewd unhappy gallows too you'll ne'er be friends with him killed your sister he made her melancholy sad and heavy and so she died had she been light like you of such a merry nimble steering spirit she might have been a grandam ere she died and so may you for a light heart lives long what's your dark meaning mouse of this light word a light condition in a beauty dark we need more light to find your meaning out you'll mar the light by taking it in snuff therefore i'll darkly end the argument look what you do you do it still i the dark so do not you for you are a light wench indeed i weigh not you and therefore light you weigh me not oh that you care not for me great reason for past cure is still past care well bandied both a set of wit well played but rosaline you have a favour too who sent it and what is it i would you knew and if my face were but as fair as yours my favour were as great be witness this nay i have verses too i thank barone the number's true and were the numbering too i were the fairest goddess on the ground i am compared to twenty thousand fairs oh he hath drawn my picture in his letter anything like much in the letters nothing in the praise beauteous as ink a good conclusion fair as a text be in a copy-book wear pencils ho let me not die your debtor my red dominical my golden letter oh that your face were not so full of o's a pox of that jest and i beshrew all shrouds but catherine what was sent to you from fair dumaine madam this glove did he not send you twain yes madam and moreover some thousand verses of a faithful lover a huge translation of hypocrisy vilely compiled profound simplicity this and these pearls to me sent longueville the letter is too long by half a mile i think no less dost thou not wish in heart the chain were longer and the letter short ay hey, or i would these hands might never part we are wise girls to mock our lovers so they are worse fools to purchase mocking so that same barone i'll torture ere i go oh that i knew he were but in by the week how i would make him fawn and beg and seek and wait the season and observe the times and spend his prodigal wits in bootless rhymes and shape his service wholly to my hests and make him proud to make me proud that jests so pertent like would i o'ersway his state that he should be my fool and i his fate 
none are so surely caught when they are catched as wit turned fool folly in wisdom hatched hath wisdom's warrant in the help of school and wit's own grace to grace a learned fool the blood of youth burns not with such excess as gravity's revolt to wantonness folly in fools bears not so strong a note as foolery in the wise when wit doth dote since all the power thereof it doth apply to prove by wit worth in simplicity here comes boyette and mirth is in his face enter boyette oh i am stabbed with laughter where's her grace thy news boyette prepare madam prepare arm wenches arm encounters mounted are against your peace love doth approach disguised armed in arguments you'll be surprised muster your wits stand in your own defence or hide your heads like cowards and fly hence saint to saint cupid what are they that charge their breath against us say scout say under the cool shade of a sycamore i thought to close mine eyes some half an hour when lo to interrupt my purposed rest toward that shade i might behold addressed the king and his companions warily i stole into a neighbour thicket by and overheard what you shall overhear that by and by disguised they will be here their herald is a pretty knavish page that well by heart hath conned his embassage action and accent did they teach him there thus must thou speak and thus thy body bear and ever and anon they made a doubt presence majestical would put him out for quoth the king an angel shalt thou see yet fear not thou but speak audaciously the boy replied an angel is not evil i should have feared her had she been a devil with that all laughed and clapped him on the shoulder making the bold wag by their praises bolder one rubbed his elbow thus and fleered and swore a better speech was never spoke before another with his finger and his thumb cried via we will do't come what will come the third he capered and cried all goes well the fourth turned on the toe when down he fell with that they all did tumble on the ground with such a zealous laughter so profound that in this spleen ridiculous appears to check their folly passion's solemn tears but what but what come they to visit us they do they do and are apparelled thus like muscovites or russians as i guess their purpose is to parley to court and dance and every one his love feet will advance unto his several mistress which they'll know by favours several which they did bestow and will they so the gallants shall be tasked for ladies we shall every one be masked and not a man of them shall have the grace despite of suit to see a lady's face hold rosaline this favour thou shalt wear and then the king will court thee for his dear hold take thou this my sweet and give me thine so shall biron take me for rosaline and change your favours too so shall your loves woo contrary deceived by these removes come on then wear the favours most in sight but in this changing what is your intent the effect of my intent is to cross theirs they do it but in mocking merriment and mock for mock is only my intent their several counsels they unbosom shall to loves mistook and so be mocked withal upon the next occasion that we meet with visages displayed to talk and greet but shall we dance if they desire to it no to the death we will not move a foot nor to their penned speech render we no grace but while tis spoke each turn away her face why that contempt will kill the speaker's heart and quite divorce his memory from his part therefore i do it and i make no doubt the rest will ne'er come in if he be out there's no such sport as sport by sport or throne to make theirs ours and ours none but our own so shall we stay mocking intended game and they well mocked depart away with shame trumpet sound within the trumpet sounds be masked the maskers come the ladies mask enter blackamoors with music ma ferdinand biron longueville and dumaine in russian habits and masked all hail the richest beauties on the earth beauties no richer than rich tafeta a holy parcel of the fairest dames the ladies turn their backs to him that ever turned their backs to mortal views aside to ma their eyes villain their eyes that ever turned their eyes to mortal views out true out indeed out of your favours heavenly spirits vouchsafe not to behold aside to mark 
once to behold, rogue. Once to behold with your sun-beamed eyes, with your sun-beamed eyes. They will not answer to that epithet. You were best call it daughter-beamed eyes. They do not mark me, and that brings me out. Is this your perfectness? Be gone, you rogue. Exit, ma. What would these strangers? Know their minds, boyette. If they do speak our language, tis our will, that some plain man recount their purposes, know what they would. What would you with a princess? Nothing but peace and gentle visitation. What would they, say they? Nothing but peace and gentle visitation. Why, that they have, and bid them so be gone. She says, you have it, and you may be gone. Say to her, we have measured many miles to tread a measure with her on this grass. They say that they have measured many a mile to tread a measure with you on this grass. It is not so. Ask them how many inches is in one mile. If they have measured many, the measure then of one is easily told. If it come hither you have measured miles, and many miles, the princess bids you tell how many inches doth fill up one mile. Tell her we measure them by weary steps. She hears herself. How many weary steps of many weary miles you have o'ergone are numbered in the travel of one mile? We number nothing that we spend for you. Our duty is so rich, so infinite, that we may do it still without a comp. Uh, vouchsafe to show the sunshine of your face that we, like savages, may worship it. My face is but a moon and clouded too. Blessed are clouds to do as such clouds do. Vouchsafe, bright moon, and these thy stars, to shine, those clouds removed, upon our watery iron. O oh, vain petitioner, beg a greater matter. Thou now requests but moonshine in the water. Then in our measure do but vouchsafe one change. Thou bidst me beg. This begging is not strange. Play music, then. Nay, you must do it soon. Music plays. Not yet, no dance. Thus change I like the moon. Will you not dance? How come you thus estranged? You took the moon at full, but now she's changed. Yet still she is the moon, and I the man. The music plays, vouchsafe some motion to it. Our ears vouchsafe it. But your legs should do it. Since you are strangers and come here by chance, will not be nice. Take hands, we will not dance. Why take we hands, then? Only to part friends. Curtsy, sweethearts, and so the measure ends. More measure of this measure, be not nice. We can afford no more at such a price. Prize you yourselves, what buys your company? Your absence only. That can never be. Then cannot we be bought, and so a Jew, twice to your visor and half once to you. If you deny to dance, let's hold more chat. In private, then. I am best pleased with that. They converse apart. White-handed mistress, one sweet word with thee. Honey and milk and sugar, there is three. Nay, then, two trays, and if you grow so nice, uh, metheglin, wort, and momsey. Well run, dice. There's half a dozen sweets. Seventh sweet adieu, since you can cog, I'll play no more with you. One word in secret. Let it not be sweet. Thou griefst my gall. Gall? Bitter. Therefore meet. They converse apart. Will you vouch of with me to change a word? Name it. Fair lady. Say you so. Fair lord, take that for your fair lady. Please it you. As much in private, and I'll bid it to you. They converse apart. What? Was your visit made without a tongue? I know the reason, lady. Why you ask? Oh, for your reason. Quickly, sir, I long. You have a double tongue within your mask and would afford my speechless vizard half? Veal, quoth the Dutchman, is not veal a calf? A calf, fair lady. No, a fair lord calf. Let's part the word. No, I'll not be your half. Take all and wean it. It may prove an ox. Look, how you butt yourself in these sharp mocks. Will you give horns, chaste lady? Do not so. Then die a calf before your horns do grow. One word in private with you, ere I die. Bleed softly, then. The butcher hears you cry. They converse apart. The tongues of mocking wenches are as keen as is the razor's edge invisible, cutting a smaller hair than may be seen, above the sense of sense, so sensible seemeth their conference. Their conceits have wings fleeter than arrows, bullets, wind, thought, swifter things. Not one word more, my maids. Break off, break off. By heaven, all dry-beaten with pure scoff. 
Farewell, mad wenches, you have simple wits. Twenty adieus, my frozen muscovits. Exeunt Ferdinand, Lords, and Blackamoors. Are these the breed of wits so wondered at? Tapers they are, with your sweet breaths puffed out. Well liking wits they have, gross, gross, fat, fat. Oh, poverty in wit, kingly poor flout. Will they not think you hang themselves tonight, or ever but in visard show their faces? This pert baron was out of countenance quite. Oh, they were all in lamentable cases. The king was weeping ripe for a good word. Piron did swear himself out of all suit. Dumain was at my service, and his sword. No point, quoth I. My servant straight was mute. Lord Longueville said, I came o'er his heart, and throw you what he called me? Qualm, perhaps. Yes, in good faith. Go, sickness as thou art. Well, better wits have worn plain statute caps. But will you hear? The king is my love sworn. And quick Baron hath plighted faith to me. Dumaine is mine, as sure as bark on tree. And Longueville was by my service born. Madam, and pretty mistresses, give ear. Immediately they will again be here in their own shapes, for it can never be they will digest this harsh indignity. Will they return? They will, they will, God knows, and leap for joy, though they are lame with blows. Therefore change favours, and when they repair, blow like sweet roses in this summer air. How blow, how blow, speak to be understood. Fair ladies masked are roses in their bud. Dismasked, their damask sweet commixture shown, are angels veiling clouds or roses brown. <sighs> Avaunt perplexity. What shall we do if they return in their own shapes to woo? Good madam, if by me you'll be advised, let's mock them still, as well known as disguised. Let us complain to them what fools were here, disguised like Muscovites in shapeless gear, and wonder what they were and to what end their shallow shows and prologue vilely penned, and their rough carriage so ridiculous should be presented at our tent to us. Ladies, withdraw. The gallants are at hand. Whip to our tents as rose run or land. Exeunt Princess, Rosaline, Catherine, and Mariah. Re-enter Ferdinand, Biron, Longueville, and Dumaine in their proper habits. Fair sir, God save you. Where's the princess? Gone to her tent. Please it your majesty, command me any service to her thither? That she vouchsafe me audience for one word. I will, and so will she. I know, my lord. Exit. This fellow pecks up wit as pigeons peas, then utters it again when God doth please. He's wit's peddler, and retails his wares at wakes and wassails, meetings, markets, fairs. And we that sell by gross, the Lord doth know, have not the grace to grace it with such show. This gallant pins the wenches on his sleeve. Had he been Adam, he had tempted Eve. I can carve, too, and lisp. Why, this is he that kissed the hand away in courtesy. This is the ape of form, Monsieur the Nice, that when he plays at tables chides the dice in honourable terms. Nay, he can sing a mean most meanly, and in ushering mend him who can. The ladies call him sweet. The stairs, as he treads on them, kiss his feet. This is the flower that smiles on every one to show his teeth as white as whale's bone. And consciences that will not die in debt pay him the due of honey-tongued boyet. A blister on his sweet tongue with my heart that put Armado's page out of his part. See where it comes. Behaviour, what wert thou to this madman showed thee? And what art thou now? Re-enter the princess, ushered by Boyette, Rosaline, Mariah, and Catherine. All hail, sweet madam, and fair time of day. Fair in all hail is foul, as I conceive. Construe my speeches better, if you may. Then wish me better, I will give you leave. We came to visit you, and purpose now to lead you to our court. Vouchsafe it then. This field shall hold me, and so hold your vow. Nor God nor I delights in perjured men. Rebuke me not for that which you provoke. The virtue of your eye must break my oath. You nickname virtue, vice you should have spoke, for virtue's office never breaks men's troth. Now by my maiden honour, yet as pure as the unsullied lily, I protest, 
a world of torments though I should endure, I would not yield to be your house's guest, so much I hate a breaking cause to be of heavenly odes, vowed with integrity. Oh, you have lived in desolation here, unseen, unvisited, much to our shame. Not so, my lord, it is not so, I swear. We have had pastimes here, and pleasant game. A mess of Russians left us but of late. How, madam, Russians? Ay, in truth, my lord, trim, gallants, full of courtship and of state. Madam, speak true. It is not so, my lord. My lady, to the manner of the days, in courtesy gives undeserving praise. We four, indeed, confronted were with four in Russian habit. Here they stayed an hour and talked apace. And in that hour, my lord, they did not bless us with one happy word. I dare not call them fools, but this I think, when they are thirsty, fools would fain have drink. This jest is dry to me. Fair gentle sweet, your wit makes wise things foolish. When we greet with eyes best seeing heaven's fiery eye by light, we lose light. Your capacity is of that nature that to your huge store wise things seem foolish and rich things but poor. This proves you wise and rich, for in my eye... I am a fool and full of poverty. But that you take what doth to you belong, it were a fault to snatch words from my tongue. Oh, I am yours and all that I possess. All the fool mine? I cannot give you less. Which of the visards was it that you wore? Where? When? What visard? Why demand you this? There, then, that visard, that superfluous case that hid the worse and showed the better face. We are descried. They'll mock us now downright. Let us gone face, and turn it to a jest. Amazed, my lord, why looks your highness sad? Help hold his brows, he'll swoon. Why look you pale? Seasick, I think, coming from Muscovy. Thus pour the stars down plagues for perjury. Can any face of brass hold longer out? Here stand I. Lady, dart thy skill at me, bruise me with scorn, confound me with a flout, Thrust thy sharp wit quite through my ignorance, cut me to pieces with thy keen conceit, and I will wish thee never more to dance, nor never more in Russian habit wait. Oh, never more will I trust to speeches penned, nor to the motion of a schoolboy's tongue, nor never come in visard to my friend, nor woo in rhyme like a blind harper's song. Taffeta phrases, silken terms precise, three piled hyperboles, spruce affectation, figures pedantical. These summer flies have blown me full of maggot ostentation, I do forswear them. And I here protest by this white glove, how white the hand, God knows. Henceforth my wooing mind shall be expressed in russet yeas and honest cursy noes. And to begin, wench, so god help me la my love to thee is sound sans crack or flaw sans sans i pray you yet i have a trick of the old rage bear with me i am sick i'll leave it by degrees soft let us see right lord have mercy on us on those three they are infected in their hearts it lies they have the plague and caught it of your eyes these lords are visited. You are not free, for the lords' tokens on you do I see. No, they are free that gave these tokens to us. Our states are forfeit. Seek not to undo us. It is not so. For how can this be true that you stand forfeit, being those that sue? Ah, oh, peace, for I will not have to do with you. Nor shall not, if I do as I intend. Speak for yourselves, my wit is at an end. Teach us, sweet madam, for our rude transgression some fair excuse. The fairest is confession. Were not you here but even now disguised? Madam, I was. And were you well advised? I was, fair madam. When you then were here, what did you whisper in your lady's ear? That more than all the world I did respect her. When she shall challenge this, you will reject her. Upon mine honour, no. Peace, peace, forbear. Your oath once broke, you force not to forswear. Despise me when I break this oath of mine. I will, and therefore keep it. 
Rosaline, what did the Russian whisper in your ear? Madam, he swore that he did hold me dear as precious eyesight, and did value me above this world, adding thereto moreover that he would wed me, or else die my lover. God give thee joy of him! The noble lord most honourably doth unhold his word. What mean you, madam? By my life, my troth, I never swore this lady such an oath. By heaven you did, and to confirm it plain you gave me this. But take it, sir, again. My faith and this the princess I did give. I knew her by this jewel on her sleeve. Pardon me, sir, this jewel did she wear. And Lord Veron, I thank him, is my dear. What, will you have me? or your pearl again. Neither of either. I remit both twain. I see the trick on't. Here was a consent, knowing aforehand of our merriment, to dash it like a Christmas comedy. Some carry tale, some please man, some slight zany, some mumble news, some trencher knight, some dick, that smiles his cheek in years, and knows the trick to make my lady laugh when she's disposed, told our intents before which once disclosed the ladies did change favours and then we following the signs wooed but the sign of she now to our perjury to add more terror we are again forsworn in will and error much upon this it is and might not you to boyet forestall our sport to make us thus untrue do not you know my lady's foot by the squire and laugh upon the apple of her eye and stand between her back, sir, and the fire, holding a trencher, jesting merrily? To put our page out, go, you are allowed. Die when you will, a smock shall be your shroud. Do you leer upon me, do you? There's an eye wounds like a leaden sword. Full merrily hath this brave manage, this career been run. Lo, he is tilting straight. Peace I have done. Enter Costard. O oh, welcome, pure wit! Thou partest a fair fray. O oh, Lord, sir, they would know whether the three worthies shall come in or no. What, are there but three? I oh, know, sir, but it's varo fini. For every one pursuant three. And three times thrice is nine. Not so, sir. Under correction, sir, I hope it is not so. You cannot beg us, sir. I can assure you, sir, we know what we know. I hope, sir, three times three, sir, is not nine. Under correction, sir. We know where until it doth amount. By Jove, I always took three threes for nine. Oh, Lord, sir, it were pity you should get your living by reckoning, sir. How much is it? Oh, Lord, sir, the parties themselves, the actors, sir, will show where until it doth amount. For mine own part, I am, as they say, but a perfect one man, in one poor man, Pocky and the Great, sir. Art thou one of the worthies? It pleased them to think me worthy of Pocky and the Great. For mine own part, I know not the degree of the worthy, but I am to stand there. Go, bid them prepare. We will turn it finally off, sir. We will take some care. Exit. Baron, they will shame us. Let them not approach. We are shame-proof, my lord. And tis some policy to have one show worse than the king's and his company. I say they shall not come. Nay, my good lord, let me o'errule you now. That sport best pleases that doth least know how. Where zeal strives to content, and the contents dies in the zeal of that which it presents, their form confounded makes most form in mirth, when great things labouring perish in their birth. A right description of our sport, my lord. Enter Don Adriano di Armado. Anointed, I implore so much expense of thy royal sweet breath as will utter a brace of words. Converses apart with Ferdinand, and delivers him a paper. Doth this man serve God? Why oh, ask you? He speaks not like a man of God's making. That is all one, my fair, sweet honey monarch. For I protest, the schoolmaster is exceeding fantastical. Too, too vain, too, too vain. But we will put it, as they say, to Fortuna de la Guerra. I wish you the peace of mind, most royal couplement. Exit. Here is like to be a good presence of worthies. He presents Hector of Troy, the swain Pompey the Great, the parish curate, Alexander, Armado's page, Hercules, the pedant, Judas Maccabeus, and if these four worthies in their first show thrive, these four will change habits and present the other five. 
There is five in the first show. You are deceived, tis not so. The pedant, the braggart, the hedge priest, the fool, and the boy. A bait throw at Novum, and the whole world again cannot pick out five such, take each one in his vein. The ship is under sail, and here she comes amain. Enter Costard for Pompey. I, Pompey am. You lie, you are not he. I, Pompey am. With Libard's head on knee. Well said, old mocker. I must needs be friends with thee. I, Pompey am. Pompey so named the big. The great. It is great, sir. Pompey surnamed the great, that often feel with targe and shield and make my food to sweat. Then travelling along this coast, I hear I am come by chance, and lay my arms before the legs of this sweet lass of friends. If your ladyship would say, thanks, Pompey, I had done. Great thanks, great Pompey. Tis not so much worth, but I hope I was perfect. I made a little thought. Right. My hat to a halfpenny, Pompey proves the best worthy. Enter Sir Nathaniel for Alexander. When in the world I lived, I was the world's commander. By east, west, north, and south, I spread my conquering might. My scutcheon plain declares that I am Alexander. Your nose says, no, you are not, for it stands too right. Your nose smells no in this, most tender-smelling knight. The conqueror is dismayed. Proceed, good Alexander. When in the world I lived, I was the world's commander. Most true, tis right. You were so, Alexander. Pompey the Great? Your servant. And Costa. Take away the conqueror. Take away Alexander. To Sir Nathaniel. Oh, sir, you have overthrown Alexander the conqueror. You will be scraped out of the painted cloth for this. Your lion that holds his poleaxe sitting on a close stool will be given to Ajax. He will be the ninth worthy, a conqueror in the field to speak. Run away for shame, Alessander. Sir Nathaniel retires. There, and shall please you a foolish smile the man. An honest man will be, and soon dashed. He is a marvelous good neighbor, faith, and a very good bower. But for Alessander, Alas, you see how tis, a little or part it. But there are worthies a come, who will speak their mind in some other sort. Enter Holofernes for Judas, and Ma for Hercules. Great Hercules is presented by this imp, whose club killed Cerberus, that three-headed Canis, and when he was a babe, a child, a shrimp, Thus did he strangle serpents in his manus. Quanium he seemeth in minority. Ergo, I come with this apology. Keep some state in thy exit, and vanish. Moth retires. Judas, I am. A Judas. Not Iscariot, sir. Judas, I am. Eclipt Maccabeus. Judas Maccabeus clipped is plain Judas. A kissing traitor. How art thou proved Judas? Judas, I am. The more shame for you, Judas. What mean you, sir? To make Judas hang himself. Begin, sir. You are my elder. Well followed. Judas was hanged on an elder. I will not be put out of countenance. Because thou hast no face. What is this? A cittern head. The head of a potkin. A death's face in a ring. The face of an old Roman coin, scarce seen. The pommel of Caesar's falchion. The god worn face of a flask. St. George's half cheek in a brooch. I, and in a brooch of leaf. I, and worn in the cap of a tooth drawer. And now, forward, for we have put thee in countenance. You have put me out of countenance. False, we have given thee three faces. But you have outfaced them all. And thou wert a lion, we would do so. Therefore, as he is an ass, let him go. And so adieu, sweet Jude. Nay, why dost thou stay? For the letter end of his name. For the ass to the Jude. Give it him. Jude ass, away! This is not generous, not gentle, not humble. A light from Monsieur Judas it grows dark, he may stumble. Holofernes retires. Alas, poor Maccabeus, how hath he been baited? Enter Don Adriano de Armado for Hector. Hide thy head, Achilles! Here comes Hector in arms. Do my mocks come home by me? 
I'll now be merry. Hector was but a Trojan in respect of this. But is this Hector? I think Hector was not so clean timbered. His leg is too big for Hector's. Morkoff, certain. No, he is best endued in the small. This cannot be Hector. He's a god or a painter, or he makes faces. The armipotent Mars of Lances the Almighty gave Hector a gift. A gilt not made. A lemon. Stuck with clothes. No, cloven. Peace. The armipotent Mars of Lances the Almighty gave Hector a gift, the heir of Ilion, a man so breathed that certain he would fight, yea, from morn till night, out of his pavilion. I am that flower. That mint? That columbine. Sweet Lord Longaville, rein thy tongue. I must rather give it the rein, for it runs against Hector. Aye, and Hector is a greyhound. The sweet war man is dead and rotten. Sweet chucks beat not the bones of the buried. When he breathed, he was a man. But I will forward with my device. To the princess. Sweet royalty, bestow on me the sense of hearing. Speak, brave Hector, we are much delighted. I do adore thy sweet grace's slipper. Aside to Dumain. Loves her by the foot. Aside to Boya. He may not by the ear. This Hector far surmounted Hannibal. The party is gone, fellow Hector. She is gone. She is two months on her way. What meanest thou? Faith, unless you play the honest Troyan, the poor wench is cast away. She's quick. The child brags in her belly already. Tis yours. Dost thou infamize me among potentates? Thou shalt die. Then shall Hector be whipped for Iaconetta that is quick by him, and hanged for Pompey that is dead by him. Most rare, Pompey. Renowned Pompey. Greater than great, 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 great Pompey, Pompey the Huge. Hector trembles. Pompey is moved. Morates, Morates, stir them on, stir them on. Hector will challenge you. Aye, if I have no man's blood in his belly, then will supper flee. By the North Pole, I do challenge thee. I will not fight with a pole like a northern man. I'll slash. I'll do it by the sword. I pray you let me borrow my arms again. Room for the incense to worries. I'll do it in my shirt. Most resolute Pompey. Master, let me take you a buttonhole lower. Do you not see Pompey as uncasing for the combat? What mean you? You will lose your reputation. Gentlemen and soldiers, pardon me. I will not combat in my shirt. You may not deny it. Pompey had meant the challenge. Sweet bloods, I both may and will. What reason have you for it? The naked truth of it is, I have no shirt. I go woolward for penance. True, and it was enjoined him in Rome for want of linen, since when, I'll be sworn, he wore none but a dishclout of Jaquinetta's, and that awares next his heart for a favor. Enter Mercad. God save you, madam. <laughs> Welcome, Mercad, but that thou interrupts our merriment. I am sorry, madam, for the news I bring is heavy in my tongue. The king, your father. Dead. For my life. Even so. My tale is told. Were these away, the scene begins to cloud. For mine own part, I breathe free breath. I have seen the day of wrong through the little hole of discretion, and I will right myself like a soldier. Exeunt worthies. How fares your majesty? Boyette, prepare. I will away tonight. Madam, not so. I do beseech you stay. Prepare, I say. I thank you, gracious lords, for all your fair endeavours, and entreat out of a new sad soul that you vouchsafe in your rich wisdom to excuse or hide the liberal opposition of our spirits, if overboldly we have borne ourselves in the converse of breath. Your gentleness was guilty of it. Farewell, worthy lord. A heavy heart bears not a nimble tongue. Excuse me so, coming too short of thanks for my great suit so easily obtained. The extreme parts of time extremely forms all causes to the purpose of his speed, and often at his very loose decides that which long process could not arbitrate. And though the morning brow of progeny forbid the smiling courtesy of love, the holy suit which fain it would convince, yet since love's argument was first on foot, let not the cloud of sorrow jostle it from what it purposed, since to wail friends lost is not by much so wholesome profitable as to rejoice at friends but newly found. I understand you not. My griefs are double. Honest plain words best pierce the ear of grief. 
and by these badges understand the king. For your fair sakes have we neglected time, played foul play with our oaths. Your beauty, ladies, hath much deformed us, fashioning our humours even to the opposed end of our intents. And what in us has seemed ridiculous, as love is full of unbefitting strains, all wanton as a child skipping in vain, formed by the eye, and therefore like the eye, full of strange shapes of habits and of forms, varying in subjects as the eye doth roll to every varied object in his glance, which party-coated presence of loose love put on by us, if, in your heavenly eyes, have misbecomed our oaths and gravities, those heavenly eyes that look into these faults suggested us to make therefore ladies our love being yours the error that love makes is likewise yours we to ourself prove false by being once false for ever to be true to those that make us both fair ladies you and even that falsehood in itself a sin thus purifies itself and turns to grace we have received your letters full of love your favours the ambassadors of love and in our maiden council rated them at courtship pleasant jest and courtesy, as bombast and as lining to the time. But more devout than this in our respects have we not been, and therefore met your loves in their own fashion, like a merriment. Our letters, madam, showed much more than jest. So did our looks. We did not quote them so. Now, at the latest minute of the hour, grant us your loves. A time, methinks, too short to make a world without end bargain in. No, no, my lord, your grace is perjured much, full of dear guiltiness, and therefore this, if for my love, as there is no such cause, you will do aught, this shall you do for me. Your oath I will not trust, but go with speed to some forlorn and naked hermitage, remote from all the pleasures of the world. There stay until the twelve celestial signs have brought about the annual reckoning, if this austere insociable life change not your offer made in heat of blood, if frosts and fasts, hard lodging and thin weeds nip not the gaudy blossoms of your love, but that it bear this trial and last love, then at the expiration of the year, come challenge me, challenge me by these deserts, and by this virgin palm now kissing thine, I will be thine and till that instant shut my woeful self up in a morning-house, raining the tears of lamentation for the remembrance of my father's death. If this thou do deny, let our hands part, neither entitled in the other's heart. If this, or more than this, I would deny, to flatter up these powers of mine with rest, the sudden hand of death close up mine eye. Hence ever then my heart is in thy breast. And what to me? my love and what to me you must be perjured too your sins are racked you are a taint with faults and perjury therefore if you my favour mean to get a twelvemonth shall you spend and never rest but seek the weary beds of people sick but what to me my love but what to me a wife a beard fair health and honesty with threefold love i wish you all these three. Oh, shall i say i thank you gentle wife not so my lord a twelve month and a day i'll mark no words that smooth-faced wooers say come when the king doth to my lady come then if i have much love i'll give you some i'll serve thee true and faithfully till then yet swear not lest ye be false one again what says maria at a twelve month's end i'll change my black gown for a faithful friend i'll stay with patience but the time is long the like are you few taller are so young studies my lady mistress look on me behold the window of my heart mine eye what humble suit attends thy answer there impose some service on me for thy love oft have i heard of you my lord barone before i saw you and the world's large tongue proclaims you for a man replete with mocks full of comparisons and wounding flouts which you on all estates will execute that lie within the mercy of your wit to weed this wormwood from your fruitful brain, and therewithal to win me, if you please, 
without the which I am not to be won, you shall this twelve-month term from day to day visit the speechless sick, and still converse with groaning wretches, and your task shall be, with all the fierce endeavour of your wit, to enforce the painted impotent to smile. To move wild laughter in the throat of death, it, it cannot be, it is impossible. Mirth cannot move a soul in agony. Why, that's the way to choke a gibing spirit, whose influence is begot of that loose grace which shallow laughing hearers give to fools. A jest's prosperity lies in the ear of him that hears it, never in the tongue of him that makes it. Then, if sickly ears, deft with the clamours of their own dear groans, will hear your idle scorns, continue then, and I will have you and that fault withal. But if they will not, throw away that spirit, and I shall find you empty of that fault, right joyful of your reformation. A twelve-month. Well, befall what will befall. I'll jest a twelve-month in an hospital. To Ferdinand. Ay, sweet my lord. And so I take my leave. No, madam, we will bring you on your way. Our wooing doth not end like an old play. Jack hath not Jill. These ladies' courtesy might well have made our sport a comedy. Come, sir, it wants a twelve-month and a day, and then twill end. That's too long for a play. Re-enter Don Adriano di Armado. Sweet Majesty, vouchsafe me. Was not that Hector? The worthy knight of Troy. I will kiss thy royal finger and take leave. I am a votary. I have vowed to Jaconetta to hold the plough for her sweet love three years. But most esteemed greatness, will you hear the dialogue that the two learned men have compiled in praise of the owl and the cuckoo? It should have followed in the end of our show. Call them forth quickly. We will do so. Hola! Approach! Re-enter Holofernes, Sir Nathaniel, Ma, Costard, and others. This side is hymns, winter. This, ver, the spring. The one maintained by the owl, the other by the cuckoo. Ver, begin. The song. When daisies pied and violets blue, and lady smocks all silver white, and cuckoo buds of yellow hue do paint the meadows with delight, the cuckoo then on every tree mocks married men, for thus sings he, Cuckoo, 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 O word of fear, unpleasing to a married ear. When shepherds pipe on oaten straws, and merry larks are ploughmen's clocks, when turtles tread and rooks and doors, and maidens bleach their summer smocks, the cuckoo then on every tree mocks married men, for thus sings he, Cuckoo, 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 O word of fear, unpleasing to a married ear. Winter, when icicles hang by the wall, and Dick the shepherd blows his nail, and Tom bears logs into the hall, and milk comes frozen home in pail. When blood is nipped and ways be foul, then nightly sings the staring owl, to wit to woo, a merry note, while greasy Joan doth keel the pot. When all aloud the wind doth blow, and coughing drowns the parson's saw, and birds sit brooding in the snow, and Marion's nose looks red and raw. When roasted crabs hiss in the bowl, then nightly sings the staring owl, to wit, to woo, a merry note, while greasy Joan doth keel the pot. The words of Mercury are harsh after the songs of Apollo. You that way, we this way. Exeunt. End of Act Five. End of Love's Labor's Lost by William Shakespeare.